This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are a Christ-centered family of God's people, growing in faith, caring for each other, bringing others to Christ, and ministering to the needs of our changing community and world. I enjoy the illustrations and examples that Jesus gives us in Scripture, and in the message for today, he uses an example from construction. And bear in mind, Jesus was not only the Son of God and the Savior of the world and the Messiah, he was also a carpenter. So he knew a thing or two about construction. He talked about building a house, and uh, you might find a location looks really good, and there are many places around where he uh, lived where there might be a, a lovely open area in a dry riverbed or a wash that would look like a great place for a house. Until that day, later in the year or, or a couple years down the road, when the rains came hard and heavy, and the waters would rise, and then the house would wash away. So we need to be mindful of a deep, strong, firm foundation for our home for the times of the inclement weather. Jesus says to us in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. May God bless this reading of Scripture. Jesus describes two types of listeners. One of them hears Jesus' words and says, That's great. I appreciated what you shared. I like listening to you. And now I'm going to do what I want to do, and uh, maybe I'll come hear you again someday. Doesn't go so well. Jesus commends the person who hears Jesus and then does what Jesus says. So they're obedient to Jesus. They not only hear him, they do what he tells them to do. And that person is the one whose home is on a firm foundation. I was thinking about 19 years ago, I was washing the... Uh, little aquarium for our daughter's fish. She had a beautiful blue and red betta fish with wavy fins uh, named Nemo. And I was cleaning the aquarium in the kitchen sink. And somehow, I don't know how this happened, Nemo, the betta, fell down the garbage disposal. My heart about dropped. I thought, how am I going to get out of this one? And who can I possibly blame and say it's not my fault? But I made a last ditch effort I ran the, the water of uh, the right temperature, not too hard. I reshaped the, uh, the uh, fish net, got my left hand, and got it down in there amongst all of those blades of the uh, uh, garbage disposal. And somehow, somehow, first try, brought Nemo out uh, back in the water. He looked beautifully clean and was vigorously splashed about. And thankful he didn't just splash about for a moment and then for me to say, what happened to your fish? He lived a couple more years. Uh, so I don't know how it worked out, but he was fine and got through it and saved me from a lot of trouble. But there was still a six-year-old six little girl with a hand on the hip and then pointing to me to the other one and shaking it, shaking her head. And I thought, that's really cute. I'll try to remember that. I'll never see her do that again. Actually, about every day. Uh, but the last 20 years. But uh, I was so glad that the fish survived. And for those of you who are thinking, I did, some of you must have been praying for me at the moment, I did unplug the garbage disposal before putting my hand and that net down in there. But, uh, but in, in a way, if we don't have a firm foundation, we're standing on something, but if we're not careful, our life might be standing figuratively on quicksand or muck and mire, or we might be sinking in the depths of the ocean, or we might, in essence, be falling down through the garbage disposal of life in our bad choices. Psalm 40, the first two verses says, 
I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the muck and mire, kind of like a garbage disposal. And he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. So without a strong foundation, we're sinking, we're falling, or we'll crumble apart when the hard times come or the inclement weather. So we need a foundation. And I have two questions this morning. The first is, who are we? And the second question is, who can we become? Who are we? I was thinking of um, something I read about in World War II. At the end of the war, there were about 200 French soldiers with amnesia. They didn't know who they were. And many of them in time, they found their families. But there were 30 left that nobody knew who they were. So there were advertisements in the national newspapers, photographs, and anyone who knew these soldiers were invited to join them in an opera house in Paris. The lights were all dark. One soldier would go up to the stage, the lights would shine on that soldier, and he would ask, does anybody know who I am? And for some, there was an answer. But that's a question we should all ask. Who am I as far as my values, the things I'm doing or not doing, my hopes, my dreams? Who are we? It's an important question to ask. And then the follow-up question is, who are we becoming? So who can we become? We're meant to be people of the way of Jesus Christ, little Christs known as we share his love with others. So we should be growing in love, growing in compassion, growing in a heart of patience for others and forgiveness and understanding, and also to be a voice for the voiceless and, and to visit those who are lonely. But we're meant to do the work of Christ and to grow into that. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So all of us stand for something and on something. The great good news is that we can stand on Jesus Christ as the author and perfecter of our faith. And that makes all the difference in life and gives us all joy and all peace. I used to worry about if someone would ask me to prove my faith or defend my faith or argue with me about my faith that perhaps they'd be smarter than I am or know more things or ask me questions I couldn't answer. But now I don't worry about that at all. I don't have to know everything. I don't pretend to know everything. And if I'm asked some question about some theologian from the 5th century or, or some nuance of some Hebrew word, I can always say, I don't know, but I can look it up. I can get you an answer later. But I don't have to worry about those things because I'm excited about what I do know. And that's that Jesus Christ loves us. Jesus Christ died for us. Jesus Christ is the one who blessed the children, fed the hungry, forgave sins, uh, ate with sinners and talked with people nobody else would talk with, cared about everybody and anybody, and that's our Lord and Savior. And so I can be excited about Jesus and I can share about Jesus. I don't have to have all the answers. I can just say what Jesus means to me and who he is to me. Anything else, I can look it up later. I don't have to have all the answers, don't need to argue. I get to share the good news because it's the best news in all the world for every single person who ever was, is, or will be. That God loved us so much that his son came down in the person of a human being, lived a life of love and compassion and kindness and service and, and tenderness for everyone he knew. And that's my savior. That's the foundation of my faith. So who are we? We're children of God, and we're meant to live into that. Yes, I fall off the foundation, or I step off the foundation, but then I want to get back on and live that right, good, godly life. And not only stand on that firm foundation, but allow God to give me opportunities to step up and step up and step up higher and do more from Him. So as long as we're on this earth, we're not only 
who we are. We're always becoming and becoming and becoming. And we're meant to be more and more in the image of God we are created to be recognized in. And even in the nursing home, when we can't move, we can still be kind and loving to the nurses, the other patients, let them know that we love them and we're praying for them. And even there, we can have a little mission or ministry. But as long as we're living, we're always, not only, not only are we, we're always becoming, and we have the potential to be transformed more and more into the likeness of our Lord and Savior. Stand on Jesus Christ as a firm foundation of your life and know that that's the greatest thing of all that you can share with anyone and everyone. Amen, and God bless you. We sang in church, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. God bless you. Amen.